Good morning, everybody, and welcome to All Saints this morning. It's great to see you all here. And uh, are we ready for the live streaming? We okay? Yeah, great, good. So, welcome to everybody, whether you're here with us in church or whether you're watching via the live stream on YouTube. It's great to be here to worship God together. All the words that you'll need for this service will be on the screens for you. Uh, I'll say the words in white and the words in black will join in together. Today we're going to be thinking about God's kingdom first. And uh, we're going to be thinking about that well-known saying of Jesus. It's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle and it is for someone who's really wealthy to inherit eternal life. We'll think about that in a moment. As we come to worship God, an opening verse of Hebrews chapter 4, and I love this verse because in the Old All Saints, before it was burnt down, this verse was uh, written over a massive great big archway above us. So this verse not only helps us to think about why we come to worship God, but actually it's a part of our All Saints heritage. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Our opening response is, God is spirit. Let us worship him in spirit and truth. The Lord is with us. Let us praise his name together. And we say this opening prayer together. Lord, direct our thoughts and teach us to pray. Lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Mark and the choir are going to lead us in our first hymn. We'll stand to sing and we'll keep our masks on to sing. Lord, for the years your love has kept and guided.
please be seated. We come now to our confession, the time when we say sorry to God for failing this week to live as he wants us to. The last verse of that hymn was brilliant because it reminds us that it's God's living power that remakes us and gives us new life. So let's join in this prayer of confession with confidence. God the Father forgives us in Christ and heals us by the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore put away all anger and bitterness, all slander and malice, and confess our sins to God our Redeemer. Father, we come to meet us when we return to you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you died on the cross for our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Spirit, you give us life and peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And together we receive and share God's promise of forgiveness. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins. Heal and strengthen us by his spirit and raise us to new life. In Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we stand to sing glory to the one who remakes us in living power. standing as we pray together the collect for today. Faithful Lord, whose steadfast love never ceases and whose mercies never come to an end, grant us the grace to trust you and to receive the gifts of your love now every morning in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now Alison's going to come and read today's Bible story for us. Um, the reading is from Mark, um, verse 10, sorry, chapter 10, verses 17 to 31. God's kingdom first. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honour your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all of these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and then come follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, 
for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard is it to enter the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age, houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields, with precautions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Alison. And now Alison's going to uh, take the younger people out to the long room, and uh, you're going to do various things that might involve camels and possibly... There's a rumour that there might be some chocolate involved as well. So, <laughs> if you're uh, uh, over the age of three, then follow Alison to the long room. If you're under the age of three, then there are toys and things out uh, in the creche if you want to go there. Uh, but if you're going to the creche, you'll need to take a parent or a carer with you. So, we'll see you all later and uh, we'll look forward to hearing what you've been doing. Those of us who are staying in here are going to think about that reading, God's Kingdom First, from Mark chapter 10. I love this little cartoon because uh, of the camel. Can we just hop back one, Andre? Yeah. Uh, and I love the fact that it says at the bottom not to scale because... If that needle were in scale with the camel, then maybe the camel could get through the eye of the needle. But we'll think a little bit more about how possible that is in just a moment. Let's pray and ask God to speak to us as we start. Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for today's Bible story. We thank you for what it says to us about putting your kingdom and you first in our lives. And so we pray that you will be with us and speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. I love some of those programs that ask people, if you could sit in a, a, a church for a whole day with anybody of your choice, who would you sit with? Or if you could have a dinner party with six guests, who would your guests be? Well, as I was thinking about this reading for today, I was thinking, if each one of us had Jesus sitting in front of us and we could ask Jesus any question we wanted to, I wonder what we could would ask him. Maybe we would ask, why do people suffer? Maybe we'd ask, why does there have to be poverty in the world? Why does there have to be war? We could ask Jesus all sorts of questions. And in today's Bible story, we come across one person who goes to Jesus to ask him a question. 
And uh, this story is in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And uh, one of uh, each gospel describes this man differently. So we hear in Mark's gospel that he was a rich man. But Matthew tells us that he was young, and Luke tells us that he was a ruler. So we put those things together and describe this person as the rich, young ruler. And he came to Jesus to ask Jesus as a question. And it was a real stonker of a question. He asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? That's an amazing question, isn't it? And uh, he says to Jesus that he's done all sorts of things. Jesus reminds him about the commandments. Uh, you, won't, you mustn't commit murder. You mustn't commit adultery. You mustn't steal. You mustn't bear false witness. You mustn't defraud. You must honor your father and mother. And uh, this rich young ruler says, Teacher, I've done all of those things. But what Jesus goes on to say to this young man is that uh, inheriting eternal life, knowing God, following Jesus, is not just a matter of uh, a list of things to do and ticking those things off as you go. Walking with God is not just about a tick list. Outwardly, this rich young ruler looked as if he was a, a really good follower of God. And yet Jesus reminds him that it's God who is good and knowing God Inheriting eternal life is about knowing God in his goodness. But Jesus also goes straight to the heart of the matter. Because he says to the rich young man, you lack one thing. And he's saying to this rich young man, you might be keeping all the commandments really, really well. Outwardly, you might look as if you're a really good follower of God. But actually, what really matters to you most are your possessions and your wealth. And Jesus goes on to challenge him to lack uh, to sell everything that he owns and to give the money to the poor. And so Jesus puts the man's attention back onto God, away from his wealth, away from his possessions, and back on to God. But before he challenges the young man, in verse 22, we read that uh, Jesus looked at this rich young ruler and loved him. Now, we don't know what it was that, we, that Jesus saw in that rich young ruler. I suspect that Jesus, knowing everything, could see right into this man's heart and could see that actually when the chips were down... This young man's money and possessions and wealth mattered far more to him than uh, living as God wanted him to. But notice that even though Jesus knew that, he still looked at that rich young man with love. Yes, he saw right into that man's soul. He saw that that man uh, was more attached to his money and wealth and possessions than he was to God. But despite that, Jesus looked on him with love. And so we know that in those times when we're challenged in following God, 
when sometimes we're more attached to other things than we are to God, that actually Jesus still looks at us with love and compassion. On Friday, Steve and I watched a documentary about minimalism. Now, if you've not heard of minimalism, it's a, a sort of a way of responding to life which takes emphasis off status and wealth and power. And this documentary was all about people uh, who had given up really high-powered city jobs. They'd given up massive houses uh, because of the stress that it was causing them to maintain that. And uh, they were living in really small, simple houses. Uh, they decluttered their lives. And one of the women was talking about Project 333. And I looked that up and I thought, oh gosh, that's a real challenge. Project 333 involves spending three months wearing only 33 different things. And that includes sh uh, shoes, accessories, jewellery, everything like that. It excludes, you'll be glad to know, uh, underwear and pyjamas um, and loungewear, which might actually cut out quite a large part of my wardrobe. But I was just thinking, gosh, if I had to choose only 33 things to recycle over three months to wear, I don't know that I could do that. That would be quite a challenge. And yet, when we get... To uh, caught up in all of those things which take our attention off God, whether it's clothes or status or whatever it may be, Jesus looks at us with love and he longs for us to uh, follow his example and not the example of the rich young ruler. Because the rich young ruler was shocked at what Jesus had to say to him and he walked away from Jesus because what Jesus was asking him to do was just too hard for him. Now uh, you'll know that I've talked quite a lot about our dog Flora uh, but Flora had two predecessors. Uh, one was another border terrier who was known as Dougal Dog uh, he was very, very sweet. And we also had a little black cat who was known as Trinity uh, because we got her the day after Trinity Sunday. And uh, when Dougal was a very small puppy, we had a real Tom and Jerry moment. If you know the cartoon Tom and Jerry, you'll know that it's uh, about a dog and a cat and a mouse. Uh, and it's very, very funny because of the things that they get up to. But we had a real Tom and Jerry moment with Dougal and Trinity because uh, Trinity had a cat flap in our back door. And when we first got Dougal, he was really, really tiny and he couldn't use Trinity's cat flap. He couldn't reach it. And even if he could reach it, he wasn't strong enough to push it open and get out. Uh, but gradually he grew, and as he grew, he learned how to use it. And I looked at him one day, and I thought, oh dear, the day is going to come when he can't fit through that anymore. Sure enough, that day came. And uh, he forced himself through the cat flap, and in doing that, dismantled it completely, and ended up looking like the second dog in the picture. And he was running around the garden with Trinity's cat flap around his neck because he pushed his way through it and uh, totally dismantled it. It was actually very funny. And uh, what Jesus goes on to say next about the camel and the needle is really humorous as well. Uh, let's have a look at this next picture. I love this little cartoon, uh, hopefully you can see the detail of that, that uh, the camel is halfway through the eye of the needle and is completely stuck and is saying, eek. 
because uh, Jesus is using that as an illustration to say, actually, for people who are totally caught up in their own lives, for people who are so wealthy that they don't have to rely on God, then that's really difficult for them to know God. So Jesus challenges the disciples and says it's hard for rich people to enter the kingdom of God because of the distraction of possessions and wealth. And yet Jesus goes on to say that it's not impossible for God. In verse 27, he says, all things are possible for God. Now, Peter went on to say, but Jesus, we've given up everything to follow you. We've given up our homes. We've given up our jobs. We've given up our families to follow you. Surely we're going to inherit eternal life. Jesus, again, takes Peter's attention off what he's given up to say what matters is looking to God. And if you really look to God then in eternal life you will see, receive a, a reward that's bigger than you can possibly imagine. And so Jesus challenges the disciples themselves about walking with God. So in verses 28 to 30, he says, in the end, it'll be worth it. It'll be worth all the sacrifices that you make to follow me. I love this little quote. Sometimes you wish you could just fast forward time just to see in the end if it's all worth it. And we might feel like that, mightn't we, when we're going through a tough time, that we just want to fast forward time and get to the end of it. But we can be assured by, through these words of Jesus that however hard life is in the present, Whatever sacrifices we make to follow Jesus, in the end, it will be worth it. And then he goes on to say something that is completely topsy-turvy, which we thought about a few weeks ago. The first shall be last, and the last shall be first. In other words, those who assume that they'll inherit eternal life, who assume that they're first in the queue, may well not. Whereas those who are at the end of the queue will. And so Jesus is turning the world upside down again. And he's reminding the disciples, he's reminding us that what matters is keeping our focus on God and not being distracted by all the things around us whatever those things may be. And so as we finish, we return to the original question. What must I do to inherit eternal life? A bit later on in Mark's Gospel, Jesus says this, you shall love the Lord your God with all your mind and with all your soul and with all your strength. And then he goes on to say, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And so Jesus sums up for us that knowing eternal life, knowing him, walking with him day by day is about loving him. It's about keeping our eyes fixed on him. It's about giving him our all our heart, our soul, our mind, our strength. And it's also about putting other people first, loving our neighbours as ourselves. And if we do those two things and ignore the example of the rich young ruler, then we too will inherit eternal life. So let's take a moment and pray, because that's a challenging story that we've been thinking about. Let's just take a moment to pray.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for this story of the rich young ruler. And Lord, we thank you for your challenging words about keeping our eyes fixed on you. And so we pray this week that you will help us not to be like that rich young ruler who is so distracted by his life that he misses the heart of knowing you. We pray that this week you will give us strength to keep our eyes fixed on you, not to be distracted by things around us, by the things that we want, but to love you with all of our strength and to love our neighbours as, as ourselves. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our next hymn is a response to what we've been thinking about. Uh, and it challenges us to give to Jesus various areas of our life. Take my life and let it be. Let's stand to sing. We sit as we continue to pray and Nisha is going to come and lead us. Gracious God, we pray for peace, justice and reconciliation throughout the world. We pray for the honouring of human rights and for the relief of the oppressed. 
we give thanks for all that is gracious in the lives of men, women, and children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all the migrants that cross the seas for safer shores. We pray for the families to be reunited, for a deeper understanding of their circumstances from the rest of the world. We give thanks for the gift of your word, the grace of the sacraments, and the fellowship of your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this local community, for all people in their daily life and work. Lord, give them strength, hope, and courage every day. We pray for the young and the elderly, for families separated and together, and all who are alone. We give thanks for human skill and creativity and all that reveals your loveliness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are in need, who find themselves struggling to pay bills, for the sick, sorrowful and bereaved. We pray for all who bring comfort, care and healing. We give thanks for human love and friendship, and for all that enriches our daily lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let, let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, J Jesus Christ. Amen. We stand now to sing again. Oh, no, sorry, I've missed out the piece. <laughs> the peace. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And so with you. Let us offer an, one another a wave of peace. So peace to all of you joining us from home. Now we're going to sing again. We're going to sing, Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow. Let's stand to sing.
please be seated. We come now to our time of communion. It's lovely to have uh, the younger people back. And uh, do have a look at their camels later and hear about what they've been doing. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He spread his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His bread is the body of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. We do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. We join now in the Lord's Prayer. Today the words on the screen are the modern words, but if you would prefer to pray in your first language or use the traditional words, then please do. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, 
now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. So as we come forward for communion, we'll start at the back of this side and move forward. Uh, then we'll go to the balcony after the choir have been, um, and then we'll move to this side, back to front and balcony. So Mark and the choir, if you'd like to come first.
join together in the prayer after communion. Merciful God, you have called us to your table and fed us with the bread of life. Draw us and all people to serve your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we have a few notices, and the first is that next Saturday evening at 7.30, there's a concert uh, in here which um, is showcasing young players, young soloists and composers. Uh, so do come along for that, and uh, Michiko is going to be helping to play one of Isa's pieces, so along with Mike and Kathy. So come along. Uh, and enjoy an evening of great music with uh, the younger generation of musicians. Next Sunday at 10 o'clock, Bishop Graham, the Bishop is, of Kensington, is join us to lead us in our worship. Originally, we had planned that this would be a, a celebration to close the 50th anniversary year of the opening of this building. But we haven't been able to do very much to celebrate it. But Bishop Graham is going to come anyway. So we'll look forward to him speaking to us and leading our worship next week. If you have children who are in year six at the moment and you want them to uh, go to one of the church secondary schools, then please let me have their forms by next Sunday either uh, through church or drop them through my letterbox at home, number 63 Church Street. Sunday the 1st, 31st of October, we're having afternoon tea at 3 p.m. Uh, everybody is welcome. If you've joined All Saints recently, I'll be sending you a personal invitation to that. Everybody else, just turn up. And uh, if you're able to bake a cake or biscuits or something for that, then have a word with Carol before you go. Sunday the 7th of November, we're having our annual service to remember our loved ones who've died. That's at four o'clock in the afternoon. That will be followed by tea and we'll move smoothly into a concert uh, with Michiko, Simon and Yoriko. They'll be playing a selection of Bach and Schubert. So lots going on over the next few weeks. I'll send the email out uh, later today. Let's stand to sing our last hymn, The Kingdom of God is Justice and Joy.
before our final prayer of blessing, just a reminder that coffee is served. Uh, so if you go through the long room, Colleen and Dorothy will give you coffee or drink and biscuits. Our final prayer of blessing. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.